So we all know ISPs suck. The majority of them give you no control over your internet connection at all in terms of where your DNS is routed, what content they let you view, and even simple settings on your ISP provided Wi-Fi modem, router, or gateway. Today I'm going to go over something that I found specifically with Comcast Xfinity, uh, but I'm assuming that like many other providers do the same thing. Uh, this is specifically related to DNS and how they route their DNS. I discovered this a couple months ago back in 2023 when I was working on a client's network and I was trying to get Cloudflare Zero Trust set up on their um, network there. As it turned out, Comcast actually rerouted their outbound DNS traffic to Comcast servers no matter what. Um, this happened whether the security edge filter was on or off, you could not disable this DNS rerouting and Comcast was essentially hijacking the outbound DNS, which was kind of frustrating to me. Um, so before I continue, I do want to mention the security implications of the unencrypted DNS traffic. Um, so this is basically essentially just passing unencrypted plain text DNS queries to an ISP. Um, and that does have some security implications, um, specifically that like that can easily be intercepted and read by anyone um, in the path of the network at the ISP level or beyond, I guess, um, including hackers or ISPs um, that have malicious intent. Um, this lack of privacy allows ISPs to monitor and log user activity, and attackers could exploit this vulnerability uh, to conduct man-in-the-middle attacks or redirect users to sites or that kind of thing. So the way to fix this is by using encrypted DNS, which is um, like DNS over HTTPS, like I'll show you today, or DNS over TLS. That essentially addresses the issues by encrypting the DNS queries, um, and that ensures that only the intended DNS server can decrypt and respond to the queries. Um, and they don't get rerouted or hijacked. This prevents eavesdropping and protects user privacy and helps maintain the integrity of the DNS resolution process. Going back to the client site I was working on in 2023 where I was setting up a Cloudflare Zero Trust, the point of my project was to implement security filtering and website content filtering through Cloudflare Zero Trust Gateway. I did figure out how to work around this issue and today I'm going to show you how you can do the same. This video will demonstrate how you can ensure your DNS is routed to the correct location specifically to Cloudflare if you're using Cloudflare Zero Trust or any Cloudflare public DNS server. This ensures that you will bypass any ISP restrictions to get the correct DNS mappings, not the ones your ISP wants you to have, or the ones that may be implemented in a man-in-the-middle attack. Uh, before we begin, though, I do want to give a disclaimer. This is not for use in schools or for any illegal activities. This method solely focuses on Cloudflare Gateway and Comcast Security Edge. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start off here. This is Cloudflare Zero Trust um, up in their dashboard here. Um, and this is one of my test websites. As you can see, it's Home Testing Network. So this is kind of how it looks in the end. Once you set it up, you can see your DNS queries. You can see your restrictions as well. If you go into, um, I believe it's Gateway and Firewall Policies. I'm not going to open it up in this video because I'm not sure what I still have in the policies, but um, essentially you can set it up to add certain categories to the policy to filter out certain unwanted websites or malware or that kind of thing. So it's really nice. If this is not an end-all be-all filter, obviously there's still workarounds for devices that are locally connected to your network. They can do the same thing and they can tunnel their DNS out to get um, an external DNS feed, but this is just something that you can do from a network management level to ensure your DNS is being routed to the correct location. Okay, so let me do a little demonstration here. I'm going to do an NS lookup on craigslist.org. This is just a test website that I know that nobody is going to access uh, just as a test. So as you can see, it returned this 208 IP address and this is um, basically Craigslist's IP address for this web server that it routed me to. Um, which is fine. So now we're going to route this through Cloudflare. Um, and I just happen to know this is the IP address of the DNS server on this network that this Pi is on. So um, just keep that in mind. But as you can see here, this is a 162 uh, as well as an IPv6 address here. But um, the 162 address is Cloudflare. I can prove that to you here. This is actually a Cloudflare error page right here. Um, because of the IP address of my Mac at the moment, you can see that this content has been blocked and it's showing the site or the IP address, you'll see that the site has been blocked because it's a known security threat, inappropriate content, or on a custom block list. So this is a custom error page that you can make within Cloudflare. Obviously, I'm gonna have to blur this out, but because of the IP address of the site that I'm coming from at the moment, that is what routed it to the error page. Um, but because of Comcast hijacking of the DNS, um, previously I was not able to even get to that page. So now we get to the point where we go over how I'm able to do that. So I'm gonna actually exit out of this and we're going to open up a different terminal session here. Sorry, I'm gonna have to blur the screen out. I'm gonna open up a new terminal session here with a different server. Okay, so now that you know the kind of the reason why 
um, it makes sense to route your DNS through somewhere else that your ISP cannot spy on you from. Um, <laughs> we are going to route this over through um, DNS over HTTPS through Pi-hole. Um, I'm happy, I happen to use Pi-hole over on the site that I was just showing you. Um, as you can see right here, um, DNS01 is that server and I'm running Pi-hole on it. And right here, the upstream server is actually this local host IP address um, on port 5053. And this is because of the documentation that I'm about to show you here, where you can actually tunnel your DNS, excuse me, all the way through Cloudflare. Um, that way you can use your Cloudflare Zero Trust um, over HTTPS without your ISP even knowing. So let's get started here. We're going to go down to the um, ARM. I believe this is a 32-bit Pi, but get the right one for your version. Okay, so we're going to actually copy these commands right here, paste these all in. It's going to download Cloudflare to our computer. Sorry, our server. Okay, so that was super easy. Let's go back over here. We scroll down, we can add all of these users. So I'm just gonna follow these instructions as they are on here. We're gonna do the user add command. And now we are going to create a configuration file for Cloudflare. Um, this is going to be a little different from the instructions here on the um, documentation. And I'll show you why here in just a second. So we're gonna close out of this for now. Okay, so this is where we're going to do a little different than the instructions. As you can see at the top of the screen, I have the documentation version of what we should add. Um, and down here at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the version that I'm using in my production environment. We are actually using um, HTTPS for our upstream, and we only have one server, so that's why you see two servers up here versus the one right there. And the xx.cloudflare-gateway.com is actually a URL that you can find in your Cloudflare Zero Trust when you go to set up a site. I'm not going to show that in this video because it's a little too in-depth for what I'm trying to talk about. Um, but you can easily navigate to your Cloudflare Zero Trust dashboard, no problem. You can pull that on up there, and like I said, it's just under your site settings, your gateway location. You'll copy this URL. It'll be some randomly generated string dot gateway dot com slash dns dash query so this is what com this is the config that you want right there and we're going to close out of this file and save it uh, now if we go back to our instructions here follow the rest of these steps and you will be able to get all of this set up so i'm going to link this in the description below this is not a super in-depth tutorial as you can tell i just want to show you kind of the benefits of doing something like this um, in your environment so Let's go back out of here. I'll let you set that up. Um, the pie hole is kind of a prerequisite for that. So if you have pie hole installed, that will work better in my opinion. Um, you can use it with other DNS um, softwares as well, but I would recommend you just use pie hole. It'll be the easiest to do. Okay, so I kind of just wanted to briefly show you that setup. You can go through the documentation yourself and find that it'll be a lot quicker, I promise. It's super easy setup. You just gotta make sure you have root access to your server or sudo access. Um, but beyond that, that is one way that you can bypass your ISP's DNS restrictions. This should not violate any terms of service because you are literally just tunneling your internet traffic, which you could do with a VPN anyway, except this still allows your internet to go through your ISP and um, it's not masking your IP address or hiding you in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so before I end this video, I wanted to go over one possible explanation I have for this DNS hijacking um, besides like the standard, oh, we're trying to keep customer safe, blah, blah, blah. Um, one reasonable explanation I could think of is if we go to peering DB here, if we go to AS7922, which is I think one of Comcast's, yeah. This looks like this is their main like Comcast backbone. Um, but with that being said, as you can see right here, if I zoom in, you can see that this actually says about one to five terabits per second of traffic levels. Now, um, that may seem like a lot of data and it is, um, but one possible explanation for that is that if they are using their own DNS servers within their own network, it could actually save them outbound bandwidth of up to like a few gigs per second. Because if a client or customer doesn't have to use DNS or internet traffic to go out into the world of the internet to access DNS, um, if they can just do that locally within the Comcast network, it could save them outbound expensive internet traffic because like I said, it would just be keeping it cached within Comcast network. That's one possible explanation I have. Although it's still frustrating that you cannot disable Comcast Security Edge. Not that Reddit is the end all be all, but this is just a thread I found here that says um, that there's no way to permanently disable Security Edge. Um, and especially like one of the one of the posts on here said that you should get your own modem. Um, but the issue with that is that if you have a static IP address like this guy mentions here, which we do, and the client site that I work on, um, you cannot actually get your own modem. So you have to use Comcast modem. So you're forced to use Security Edge if you have a static IP, which in my opinion, a static IP is an important business 
um, aspect of having internet, but at the same time, a security edge like that is not something these higher end businesses would want um, because they would likely have their own network anyway if they're to the level that they need a static IP address for their internet connection. So this is just something a little odd to me. I'm not sure why you cannot disable a security edge. I wish you would be able to, but um, that was one of the solutions that I found. I hope this helps someone that is looking for a way to bypass security edge. Um, so yeah, have a great day. I will see you in the next video.